Hey guys, Cam back here in the Battler Workshop and welcome. Um, I'm building a small sterling coffee pot engine at the moment and I need to make up the displacer piston and uh, you can make them up out of balsa or you can make them up out of foam. And the easiest way to make them out of foam is to do them with a hot wire cutter. And uh, I don't have one and there's a lot of information on YouTube about how to build one. But there's a fair bit of work in it. So uh, this one I built in about 20 minutes using a piece of gear that I have in the workshop and I think 99% of us will have this piece of gear. Um, so it's a very, very quick, simple and easy build um, to do one-offs. Um, it's an easy thing, you can split it down and, and, and put it into a small shoebox and uh, drag it out when you want it again. It uh, only takes a couple of minutes to set up. So let's go over and have a look at it. Um, we'll show you it working and then uh, I'll show you the build components. And uh, I guess if you've ever got to do a hot wire cutter, um, this might be a solution for you. All right guys, so this is it. I'm just using my Perlis drill press to do this. Um, I've got a, uh, an insulated rod up inside here with a, uh, a bolt through it that I've just drilled a hole through to attach the monochrome wire through. Uh, underneath, once again, I've got another plastic plug um, with a bolt through it uh, and a hole and the monochrome wire just attached to that and just strung between the two. Um, the drill press quill has a, uh, a fairly strong spring on it, which is great because it keeps the monochrome wire nice and tight. And uh, I just use a, an angle block just to make sure that everything's running square all the way through. A little bit of stuffing around to get the table squared up, but uh, it's pretty spot on there. All right, I'll bring it up closer and we'll show you how it works. Hi guys, that's the foam I'm using. Um, I recently purchased a new motor for my Victor Lathe and uh, it came packaged in a high density foam. So uh, this is ideal for the job that I want to do. So let's just give it a quick run. I've got this set at about four millimeters in thickness. I'll try and keep my hands out of the way as much as I can. So that's it there, very consistent on it and uh, cuts extremely well. So drill press, bit of monochrome wire, I'll show you the controller and I'll break it down and show you the components. So very, very, very simple, very quick little uh, hot wire foam cutter. All right, if you see up inside there, it's the underside of the table, you can see uh, that plug, that um, plastic plug I've got up in there, the insulator plug. What I'll do is I'll just undo the uh, rod in the chuck and we'll drop that, uh, we'll drop that out. Okay, so let's just take that out. Uh, pull that monochrome wire all the way through now. I might just put the camera down to do that and we'll come back. All right, so that's that plastic insulator plug that uh, I've made up and it's just got the, a bolt up inside with a small and four socketed cap screw just connecting up the wiring. On the chuck end, all I've got is a little bit of Delrin that I've machined up once again with a bolt through it and a nut just uh, securing the wire onto the uh, onto the end to make the contact. And I'm just using a regulator power supply. This goes from 9 volts to 24 volts and I just run it on the 9. It's uh, It works out really well and that's just an eBay purchase. The, uh, the details of it there. So yeah, very, very simple setup. Only took uh, just over half an hour to make up all the bits and pieces and uh, and to get it up and going. So uh, it's worked out extremely well. Just for bits of plastic, I buy these down at my local Bunnings and they're only a couple of bucks each and just use a hole sorter to uh, drill out slugs of plastic that I need. And uh, that's what I machined up the uh, that, uh, that white plug with. All right, we'll go back into the office and we'll do a bit of a wrap up and show you how things ended up. And, uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Just a quick one before I go. Um, that just shows you the whole hot wire foam cutter all wrapped up, just ready to pop in a box, ready for the next time. Very, very simple. So this is the adapter plug that goes on the end of the plug of the little power supply. And that allows you 
to connect your wires and I've got that one disconnected so that I could uh, pull it through the table. But I just bought that down at my local J-Car store, J-Car electrical store. Just to show you the quill, this is the quill that I've got and it's got a fairly strong spring in there that retracts that back up. And when the heat comes onto that wire, you can actually see that handle move just as it slackens off and then takes up the tension again. So once that heat's in it and it's at, uh, at the correct tension, it's, it's fine. If you wanted a bit more tension, you could possibly hang a weight off there, I guess. But uh, the tension that I've got on this spring, it's, uh, it's more than enough. Okay, just a quick wrap up to this. This is the uh, displacer piston that I've made out of the uh, foam using the foam cutter, hot wire foam cutter. And I'm very, very happy with, with how that's come out. That's the cylinder it's going to sit into. And uh, the thickness is pretty consistent all the way around, so it worked out well with that angle plate up against it. All right, I've got a little bit more work to do on this. I'm waiting for some Allen keys to come in for the very fine M2 grub screws. It's a 0.9 millimeter hex Allen key, and um, I can't complete it to get the timing set until I've got that. But uh, it's getting very close. All right, well, that's the hot wire cutter done, and uh, I'll pack it up now, and uh, we'll get the drill back uh, back into service again. Okay, cheers for now.